everyone welcome to Kelly's Creative Dream Studios and it is Mixed Media Monday and we are talking about the clusters element today for the Dear Julie Julie's August Assembly Line Junk Journal Challenge now I have two today I need to glue these together and then I'm going to show you how I put them together I am using two papers from the Toil and Trouble Designer Series paper from Stampin' Up's Halloween uh, fall catalog last year for 2019 I bought a bunch of this because this little girl can be cut out with the die the cauldrons and the cat can be cut out with the die and I believe the frogs can too and then I've got all these nice borders to play with so what I did was I started with I knew what I wanted to do I knew I wanted to use the witch and the cauldron so I cut out a witch, a cauldron, and a kitty cat from that designer series paper. From another piece of that, which is the back side of the cauldron paper, I cut my base. This is the um, larger Project Life, uh, the standard size Project Life card frame from uh, Project Life. And then what I did was I topped it and cut at the same time with this die from this Tim Holtz collection. Um, does not have a name, and I've got part of the number cut off, but it is still available through Sizzix. I'll look for it and put the link down below. So I layered this over top of my green paper, layered this in so that the bubbles were going up. And I cut them both at the same time. So I have those cut out. And what I wanted to do was position the cauldron down here. And I'm going to, I wanted, what I think this is probably going to do is this is probably going to become a tuck spot as a cluster. But I'm going to try to decide if I want to add dimension with that or not. I think I do. I think I do. I'm trying not to do too much dimension because as I add dimension, I'm going to be adding bulk. And when you add bulk to a single signature journal, it gets interesting. I mean, it makes it very quickly. If you're talking a single, single signature with three of these embellishments in it, if they're not placed appropriately, you're going to have all kinds of bulk in one corner of your journal and you're really going to get the alligator mouth i think what i'm going to do because i really want this to have dimension and i've not added a lot of dimension in this journal so let's go ahead and just pop it up with these mini dimensionals from stampin up i love these because i love being able to get the multiple sizes I also enjoy being able to get both of the sizes, the small and the large, in black. Which is going to come in handy behind the kitty cat here in a minute. Now because this is the same witch on all of them and she's going the same direction, the cauldron has to go down in this bottom right hand corner. And I'm going to put the kitty cat right beside it trying not to catch his tail on fire and then she's gonna go right there now technically is this a cluster I don't know for me it is it works now I've got this kitty cat isn't gonna take much so I'm just gonna take the edge of this sheet of dimensionals and I'm gonna cut off two of the edge pieces and then that way where that little dive is where one of the hexagons was at will blend right in along with his neck we'll let him stand up he's getting his tail on fire you know that getting his tail on fire I was gonna do a bat and then I changed my mind I may do three of them I may do a do a couple of bats instead of cats anyway just for to make them a little bit different I'm 
also going to try something else here in just a minute. I may not use the cat on all of them. When we get ready to do this next one, let's try something a little different. Remember that spider web stuff that we used on Friday? I have an idea. I just don't know if it's going to work. So we'll test it out together. How's that sound? And then there's our witch. And there's our cluster element. Now, let me grab some of that spider web really fast. grabbed um, patina green glimmer mist I don't know if that's going to work but we're going to find out I love experimenting with you guys it's so much fun I never know what I'm going to get into now this is really really I mean it's that spider web stuff that you'd make your fake spider webs all over your house at Halloween and you can really stretch it out so what I want to do, I don't see my spray mist catcher here anywhere. But what I want to do is give this a good shake. Get all those little goldy flex particles off the bottom. I'll bet my spray stub is, tub is still out in the out in the living room where I've been still trying to get stuff put away. Okay, I'm going to tilt this up a little bit. Come on, squirt. There we go. Try to keep it all contained onto the paper. And we're going to give that a second to dry. While that's drying, I'm going to show you, I used my uh, sidekick from Sizzix, this is the Tim Holtz one. And here is that cauldron, and there's the kitty cat. And I think, I don't think I brought the kitty cat over here with me, but I don't think there's room to get them both on this page at the same time anyway. Let me move this. Move this up here. And all I do is lay my sit my die right around that follow the edge of the cauldron and I'm gonna hope I don't tear that let me move that because if I put that there I'm liable to tear that kitty cat and I don't want to tear him I'm gonna need him later and then make my sandwich with my two plates now if you've not used a sidekick before it works better if you've got a glass surface to lay it on I'm gonna have to probably hold it on this board but you just flip that leather lever in place and it locks your vagabond down, your Sizzix down, sidekick. And that gives us our cauldron. So I've got that cauldron cut out for another one for later. And I'm going to try not to lose that die before then. And I'm going to go ahead and cut out the witch. And she's done the exact same way. Just kind of have to fussy, fussy around a little bit to get your die just where you want it. And Stampin' Up! has been really good about coming out with several of these types of papers and dies. I believe our whale this time um, coordinates with the whale punch. So you can punch the whale out. Okay. Move my sidekick somewhere. <laughs> And there's our witch all cut out and ready to go. So I'm going to lay those two up there. I'll have to come back and do the cat later. And what did I do with that cauldron? I don't want to lose track of it either. But what I'm thinking... Let me grab a bat.
Okay, I have our spooky bat punch that we used to have with Stampin' Up. We now have a bat die set. But I, ha I can't see buying the dies because I own the punch. So, you know, I don't need multi places of to get an element element from. And I'm using some black glossy cardstock. And I'm going to try and position that to where I'm getting the smallest bat out of there. And that works just like that. Move that out of the way. Move that out of the way. Bring this one in. And instead of doing the cat with this one. And this one I had the die go in the wrong direction. Um, dimensionals for our witch. And I realize I've got one up here at the top of her head. Just one on the corners of her dress. She's not going anywhere. And I want to go ahead and put the dimensionals on the pot. And you'll see here in a minute why I was thinking about using the dimensionals instead of gluing the pot cauldron down flat. Because what I'm going to do is take a little piece of tear and tape, just a smidge, and I'm going to put it right down the center. See how I've got that down through the center? And then we're going to take a piece of this that we sprayed with the glitter mist, and it's still, still damp. And we don't need much, just pull, pull some out. I like that piece better. And we're just going to kind of ball it up and stick it onto that. So when we flip this over and then pull our papers off our dimensionals. And I'm having to be careful because now that that wasn't completely dry, my fingers are a little damp. And I don't want to compromise my glue dot. One more here. And then we have a little wisp coming up out of the top of our cauldron. And we'll take the dimensionals off of our witch. Add her to here. And then we're going to come in with one of our uh, a couple of pieces of our small edge from our black dimensionals. Now we could also use one of the regular dimensionals and cut them in half and that would work. We're going to put this on the back of our bat just like that. Now I'm filming this on Tuesday night so that I can get everything uploaded this weekend while I'm at the hotel. Um, so I'm only making a couple of these for now and I will come back when I get home this weekend and do the rest of them. And there, we'll put our bat on there. And now we have one with the cat and one with the bat. Give me a uh, comment down below. Tell me which one you like or if there's something different you would have added. Um, I can do three elements, so I'm kind of sneaking the fuzzy in on that one. I'm fudging just a little bit because I've got my base, which is the green paper, and then I've got my witch and the cauldron and the bat or the cat. Pick one. I'd love to hear what you think. Thanks for joining me today. Remember to like this video so that I know what kind of content to create continue to create for you. Also, if you're not a subscriber, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. When I hit 500, if I hit 500 by the 26th of September, I will be giving away a couple more prize packs, so you're going to want to make sure you do that. And um, when you subscribe, make sure you click the bell and click that you want all notifications so that whenever I put something up new, and sometimes I may throw something in off schedule, you're not going to want to miss what goes up. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you back here on Friday. Creative blessings.